Okay, so let's try something a little different. Uh, I've now got a laptop with a touch screen, so maybe I can write all over the slides a little better. Ignore my ugly face because I'm staring down at the laptop. But let's just go right to the last slide. And let's work on these numbers. So the first thing we want to do is we need to add up all of our resistances to find RT. So we've got 8 ohms at R2 plus the 2.2s. Um, the inverse equation with the 12 ohms and that gives us 4.94 ohms add up the 2.5s gives us RT equals 5.94 ohms okay so now we can calculate our total current so we have 120 volts divided by 5.94 ohms equals 20.2 amps so we've got 20.2 amps is IT okay which also means that there are 20.2 amps there okay and 20.2 amps down here although typically I just do the work on one wire not both um, they're going to be the very same numbers okay so um, where do we go next well we have the ability to calculate the voltage drop on that wire so if it's 20.2 amps multiplied by 0.5 ohms we have 10.1 volts dropped 10.1 volts dropped there and at the bottom as well so now we've got Kirchhoff's voltage law through that loop right there so if we started with 120 volts and we lose 10.1 at each of the two wires we have 120 volts minus 20.2 leaves us with 99.8 volts 99.8 volts right there 99.8 volts divided by that 12 ohms tells us that there's 8.3 8.3 amps flowing through there now we can use Kirchhoff's current law right here if we have 20.2 amps entering minus 8.3 amps exiting in the first branch we have 11.9 amps 11.9 amps over here okay I'm not even going to worry about the voltage uh, over here at the other end what I want to fast forward to is the power so we can use at R2 we can use power equals I squared R so we have 11.9 squared times 8 ohms equals 1,132.88 watts okay I can also calculate the, the power at R1 I can just use the regular power equation is 99.8 volts times 8.3 amps is 828.34 oh sorry 34 watts let's go back and find our total power as well 120 volts times 20.2 amps is 2424 watts okay so now we can look at how we talk about efficiency this is kind of where I was trying to get to here with you guys so efficiency is this weird n and it's equal to the power output of the loads this is the power output that we want all right so r1 and r2 are our two electrical loads they are doing things in our circuit so what is what's their power output well r1 has a power output of 828.34 watts add to that the power output of r2 which is 1132 0.88 watts divide that by the total power of the circuit which is 24 24 and let's find out what we get so we've got 828.34 plus 1132.88 equals and that is 1961.22 divide that by the total power which is 2424 and we get 0.8 so the answer here is 0 
that's a zero, believe it or not. Sorry, guys. 0 0.809 or 80.9%. Okay, that is the efficiency of our circuit. 80.9% is the power output of those two loads compared to the power input from the power supply. Where's the other uh, almost 10% of the power? Well, that's output on the wires. Okay, so if we look at just this first spot up here, let's find out what the power equals up here. Okay, so it's 10.1 volts times 20.2 amps. So there's 204 watts. 204 watts is how much heat's being generated by that wire. 204 would be the same number we would calculate down here on this wire. And then we would have to find out what the power is of the other two. Uh, we could find that. I'm not going to take the time, but but that's where the rest of the power in the circuit is going. It's it's heat being generated by the wire. OK, so that's kind of messy. But uh, hopefully you guys have spent the weekend working on these kinds of numbers. And so this at this point, I hope is just reinforcing what you've already figured out. OK, uh, I'm going to move on to the next PowerPoint, go back to my own laptop, uh, my own computer rather, and uh, and we'll carry on with the next lesson.